Hi everyone, uh, it's Dima, the tutor. In this video, we are going to continue our getting ac acquainted with the PTE test. Just in case, you know, if you're watching such kind of videos for the first time, let me make a short preface to PTE. PTE is such a test of English, uh, which has been around for maybe well, I don't know, 20 years or even more. And uh, it's not so widespread as IELTS or TOEFL. However, I think of late it's gaining some popularity because, um, you know, firstly, it's computer-based, and secondly, there is also the second mode available, fully online mode, where you can sit at home and pass it, like Duolingo. And, you know, a lot of universities accept your Pearson Test of English scores. Even... Uh, this PTE is accepted by immigration authorities with the exception of, uh, I mean, this online PTE. Okay, so PTE is very interesting in terms of its structure. You know, it has 20 tasks. 20. If you know, Duolingo has 10 tasks. IELTS and TOEFL, let's say roughly 4 or 5 tasks, but this one has 20. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, I... Uh, I'm out of words to describe it. And, uh, you know, these 20 tasks, they follow each other within two hours. In our last video, we uh, got acquainted with uh, reading aloud, where you just see a sentence and read it aloud. Today, let's uh, dive into sentence repetition. We have to repeat a sentence. Everything, I think, is very clear and simple to understand. Uh, I will show you now. So, we list, by the way, all these tasks which uh, are here right now, so you look at them, they have been taken, taken f by some enthusiasts from real PTEs. So, I think it's very nice because uh, nowadays on the internet and on YouTube, you will not find a lot of real, authentic tests from PTE. You will find a lot of videos in English with opinions, uh, exercises, books, maybe some audios, videos, but not, but not real tasks. And I think these real tasks give you an opportunity to feel 100% feel what PTE is like. And you understand that if you know this, when you sit down to your actual test, you will feel much better. Okay, my friends, let's now listen to these sentences, and I will reproduce them, at least try to reproduce, because sometimes I will make mistakes. You will feel this American accent here, and also the, you know, the record, the recordings are quite uh, peculiar. I, you will understand what I mean, especially concerning some pauses. Intonation and pauses. Sometimes they confuse the pauses. I don't know whether they do it on purpose or I don't know why, and it can mislead us. However, it is an interesting process. You try, please, to pronounce the sentence even faster than I do. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, PTE is not an adaptive test, as far as I get it. So uh, you just listen. Uh, to these sentences and repeat. I mean, unlike Duolingo, uh, where you have firstly something simple and then more and more difficult if you succeed. Here, no. You just hear a set of sentences and just you have to reproduce them with nice American English pronunciation. Okay, let's click on the first one and listen. A computer virus destroyed all my files. Mm -hmm. You see this button? Just it is highlighted automatically by default. You don't have to click anything. You just have to focus and reproduce. Uh, so let's click retry on this resource and uh, listen again. A computer virus destroyed all my files. A computer virus destroyed all my files. So this sentence, I think, is quite simple. Probably no comments because it has one clause, basically no pauses. Apart from, you know, every sentence has some inside inner pauses, but um, let me show you, even here. A computer virus destroyed all my files. A computer virus destroyed all my files. You see, he's not making a pause after the word virus, which is not correct. I think in an ideal scenario, he should have made a pause there, like a computer virus 
then micropause destroyed all my files. But he's not doing that. I think when you speak, of course, you try to emulate him, but you know, try please to make those pauses. I think it will be a very good practice. You show that you understand and you feel where in your sentence you should have those pauses. Okay, let's listen to a second one. A lot of agricultural workers came to the east and to look for alternative work. You see, much more words and difficult to memorize and you don't have a lot of time. You see, I will show you how much time you have. Overall, Let's listen, then you will see you have 20 seconds. A lot of agricultural workers came to the east end to look for alternative work. Oh, I'm sorry, 15, 15, yeah, 15 seconds. So, you just have to do it. Uh, the more you practice with the real tasks, the better. And this is the only philosophy here, I think, that can be applied. Okay, let's listen again and uh, reproduce. By the way, yeah, at the real test, you have only one attempt. But here I'm discussing with you something, that's why I'm re-clicking here several times. A lot of agricultural workers came to the east end to look for alternative work. A lot of agricultural workers came to the east end to look for alternative work. Let me show you the transcript. A lot of agricultural workers came to the east end to look for alternative work. So in this sentence, uh, in theory, we should have two basic pauses. A lot of agricultural workers, here the first one, came to the east end, the second one, to look for alternative work, you see. And now let's listen how he's doing it. He's doing it without those pauses, which is not very nice, I say. A lot of agricultural workers came to the east end to look for alternative work. Yeah, but there is a good news, I think, in this, is, uh, which is that, you know, the worse it is here, the better you will understand everything there, I mean, uh, in the real test. You understand this principle, I think, yes? Uh, so, this is good, that if you practice something difficult, when you go to the actual test, you will feel much, much better. Unlike the case when, you know, here everything is ideal, in some resource you practice, some ideal simple sentences with the, uh, with the ideal <coughs> pronunciation on the part of the speaker and then when you come to the actual test you know you're, you're quite embarrassed and dazzled because you have just, everything is totally different okay let's listen to the next one try please to pronounce sentences like uh, as soon as you hear it a periodical is a publication that is issued regularly a periodical is a publication that is issued regularly or issued, yeah, you can, you know, uh, issued, issued. So you pr reproduce probably better by an American uh, scenario. Let's listen again. A periodical is a publication that is issued regularly. Yeah, that is issued regularly. Let me show you the transcript. A periodical is a publication that is issued, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's my habit, issued regularly. Here again, you know, when you are reading, you have two micro pauses. A periodical the first one, is a publication, the second one, that is issued <laughs> issued regularly. The announcer is pronouncing it without any pauses. A periodical is a publication that is issued regularly. So you decide for yourself how you better do it. I highly recommend that you pronounce it fluently. Uh, however, those pauses matter because your listener, in theory, he or she is more comfortable understanding what you're saying if you make those logical micro pauses. Okay, let's take the next one. This was a simple one, I think. More or less simple, yeah, not very, but... Uh... Preliminary bibliography is due the week before the spring break. I heard something like there, a preliminary bibliography is due by the end of the next spring break, something like that. Let's listen again. A preliminary bibliography is due the week before the spring break. Ah, the week before, a week before uh, the spring break. So, a preliminary bibliography is due uh, a week before the spring break. You see, the sentences are a bit cumbersome for us to reproduce. A preliminary bibliography is due the week before the spring break. Ah, uh -huh, the week before, not a week before, I made a mistake. However, you know, I think that uh, not maybe I made a mistake because uh, in theory you should have it due a week before, yeah? Why the week before? Okay, let's... Ah, maybe they mean this exact week just before, then maybe. In this case, yes. Okay, let's listen again. A preliminary bibliography is due the week before the spring break. 
a preliminary bibliography is due the week before the spring break. You know, I suspect that to get a high score at this section, you don't need to have an ideal American type of pronunciation. More often than not, I see how guys from China or India, you know, their specific accent, they get decent grades and everything is fine. So, uh, you know, I think among those 20 tasks at PTE, you should of course pay some attention to this one. But to be over obsessed with this and to be overwhelmed with those exercises to improve your pronunciation and to spend a lot of energy on this, I think maybe is not an ideal idea let's say like that i think you have something else to focus upon and if you do your readings and listenings very and writings very very well so even here if you lose some points for your pronunciation anyway your overall band will be very very high i think so if you have some other ideas or experiences you please let us all know uh, i mean in the comments to this video your comments are very appreciated and they are very valuable because there is not so much information let me repeat myself on the internet and on YouTube about some practical experience uh, of passing uh, this Pearson test okay let's uh, take the next one let's listen please these skill seminar is on for the students who require assistance Okay, I think that he say, he has said something like, uh, the skills seminar is on for those students or for the students who require assistance. Yeah, we understand that in the real uh, PTE you will not have any time to think or re-listen or something. Let's look at the transcript. A studies, ah, studies skill, yeah, I have lost study. A studies skill seminar is on for the students who require assistance. You see, they're catching you here on this collocation, not even a collocation, combination of words, is on, here should be a pause, which they drop, uh, is on for the students who require, you know, it's a typical uh, English structure, unlike a lot of those structures in other languages, so if you are a non-native speaker, which I think, uh, who I think you are, so you can have a problem here. A study skill seminar is on for the students who require assistance. Yeah, okay, let's re-listen. A study skill seminar is on for the students yeah. who require assistance. Yeah, yeah, you see here, okay. So, you know, I think... Okay, let's listen to one more and reproduce, and this will be all for today's lesson. I think you have already an idea of what PTE, repeat the sentence, section is like. Not section, a task, okay. A thorough bibliography is needed at the end of every assignment. A thorough bibliography is needed at the end of every assignment. Here, I think, more or less comprehensible thing. Let's listen again. A thorough bibliography is needed at the end of every assignment. A thorough, yeah, of course, of course he is swallowing uh, the word thorough. Let's listen again. A thorough bibliography is needed at the end of every assignment. Yeah, they're trying to mislead you, you see. It's their task. <laughs> uh, they want to make sure that you understand quick spoken English. <laughs> yeah, which is very interesting. American English, let's say, yes, um, which is also a very important aspect. If you're getting ready to pass this PTE, please focus upon American English, not upon British. If you have two years, let's say, before the test, then you're welcome to listen and read everything in your life, everything in English, ranging from, I don't know, Edward Gibbon, a huge English classic to something more than American. But if you have two weeks before the test, I think it's not a good idea to focus upon something British because, you see, PTE is a purely American uh, test. And luckily, now we have YouTube and other resources where you have enormous amount of some audios, videos, articles, everything, where you can improve. Okay, guys, so if you want a professional tutor who, who can help you to get a decent score at the PTE test, you're welcome to contact me. You can do it directly uh, via my uh, WhatsApp and uh, WhatsApp or Viber. Yeah, I will put the details in the description to this video. Oh, please visit my website and fill out the form there. I will be glad to assist you. Okay, I wish you success and see you in our next video.